This week, the U.S. government releasing a new report on unidentified anomalous phenomena, what most people know as UFOs. The report found that between August of last year and April this year, the office tracking these sightings received nearly 300 reports. Some of these incidents are still under investigation because they could pose a security threat to U.S. military operations, especially aviation. Let's bring in Chris Impey, a professor of astronomy at the University of Arizona. Chris has more than 210 publications on space and has written about past sightings. So, Chris, the report says there's no evidence that any of these objects came from outer space. Is that the final word? That's been the word for the last few years from the NASA committee, from the congressional uh, reports to, to U.S. Congress. It, it's been consistent. Nobody's seen little green men yet. Okay, so have officials made the data available to outside experts for an independent review? They, are, they will make all the unclassified data available, and the data that the NASA committee is, is studying, hundreds of reports, is also going to be made available. The classified stuff um, has to go through a very torturous procedure, so I'm not sure others, civilians, will get to see that. Right, I know all about declassification. So what do we know about that data that is classified? Any hints? Well, I think it's mostly classified because it occurs, um, you know, near military bases or whatever. And I suspect the type of data we're looking at involves radars or particular imaging devices that the military just doesn't want to publicize. So it's not a question of what the data shows. It's a question of the detectors that they're using. So this is really a question of sources and methods and revealing how good uh, the U.S. military uh, techniques are. Exactly. It's a sort of intelligence issue. Same would be with the intelligence agencies. Okay, so let's go a little deeper on the risk these objects could pose to U.S. military operations. What does that look like? Well, the report says there were no indications of direct threat uh, to the military pilots who saw them, or I think the commercial pilots. Um, so it's very interesting because they're not, uh, you know, intervening. I mean, obviously, American military deal with incursions, but and proximity of Russian or Chinese pilots where there's real risk and danger, that that doesn't seem to be happening here. Um, so they're at a sufficient distance that they don't declare it a direct threat. So just to bottom line it, what explains all of this? Well, some of it's in the report. The report's pretty slim, actually, only 12 pages. <laughs> That is slim paid. for a government report. Let's be real, exactly. okay? <laughs> exactly. exactly. Only five pages of text. Um, so they talk about the shapes. The shapes are interesting because in more than half of the cases where our shape is reported, it's a sphere or a, a spherical object. That's kind of interesting because anyone who knows a bit of physics knows that spheres are not very aerodynamic. And so it's not none of our high-speed conveyances are spheres. Weather balloons are spheres, so maybe some of these are weather balloons. Um, so that's one thing that jumps out in the data. And the other is the geographical distribution, which wasn't called out much in the report, but there's a map. And the sightings are very interestingly clustered. They're mostly in the southern U.S. The big hotspot is the southern U.S. coast, east coast, where there are a lot of military bases, some in California, and then a huge number in the Persian Gulf and over Iraq, and then another huge number over China which is also interesting because most of these seem to be U.S. sightings, so I'm not sure where the Chinese data came from. <laughs> oh, that's pretty interesting. So just, uh, just to take that a little bit further here, so there are four hotspots where you have these sightings, two in the U.S., the Gulf, and then, and then China. What yeah. do you think explains that? They're not very, they're not uniformly distributed at all. And, that, and that's been the case of UFO sightings going back to Roswell, you know, going back 80 years. If you plot them, you know, hundreds of thousands of sightings on a map, the U.S. gets a lot of sightings. They fall off at the Mexican and Canadian borders, which doesn't really make sense because if something's in the sky over the border, Mexicans should see it as well as Americans and Canadians should see it too. Brazil, a country with the same population and size roughly as the U.S., hardly any sightings, very, very few. So it's not uniform. This seems to be a an example of American exceptionalism, I'm not sure why. <laughs> or curiosity, right? <laughs> That's, uh, curiosity. Or the looking for the uh, ex unexplainable, kind of trying to look for an answer there. Chris Impey, thanks for your analysis. Sure. Happy to be with you.